Hi everyone. In this video, we'll learn how to read articles efficiently, access the full text of articles, determine whether an article is current enough, consider what populations are missing from the research, and use an equity lens to provide equitable care for all patients. We'll um, first talk about how to read an article. The first step is to read the abstract in full. If it's a research study, the abstract should include the purpose, the research question, the methods used, the results, and the conclusion. If it's a review or another type of article, it will summarize the article's main points and conclusion. Most, but not all of the time, you'll be able to tell whether the article will be of use to you just from reading the abstract. However, sometimes you'll need to read the article itself to find out more information before making that determination. If you think the article would be relevant to your search, or if you're unsure, you'll want to continue reading the paper, and so you'll need to access the full text of the article. When you have the full text of the article, the first step is to skim the paper's headings to see how it's organized. Consider where in the paper the information you need might be located. For research studies, if you'd like to know the topic's importance, its background, or the existing literature, look at the introduction. If you want to find out how the study was designed, look at the methods section. For the study's findings, look at the results. To learn the study's limitations and the meaning and importance of the results on the topic, look in the discussion and conclusion section. For articles that are not studies, such as reviews, their headings will be topical, and so you'll want to skim the headings and see where the information you're looking for might be found. Finally, to see what other sources the author cited, look in the references. If you're looking for something very specific, use Control F on a PC or Command F on a Mac to search for a specific word or phrase you're looking for to see where it's mentioned in the paper. Make sure to read enough of the paper to really understand the information. How much you need to read really depends upon what you need to find out. So sometimes you'll need to read the full paper in depth and take notes. Sometimes you can simply do control F and read a paragraph. Just be sure that you understand whatever it is and haven't missed any of the author's points because you didn't read enough of it. Your goal when uh, researching is to find the relevant articles and then look for how to access the full text. When you're searching PubMed and other databases, you'll often find the citation and abstract of articles and then we'll need to click links to access the full text or to request it through interlibrary loan. Again, first think of finding the relevant resources and then finding the full text second. So how do you get to the full text? The first step is to always use the link to the databases from the optometry resources guide on the library's website. Even though some databases like PubMed or Google Scholar are freely available to be searched online, if you click the links to them from the Optometry Resources Guide or from the library's website, you'll see links to access the full text to the articles at Pacific or to request them through interlibrary loan. When you find an article in PubMed that you would like to access, look for the full text options on the right side of the page. This example has three options, one from the Cochrane Library, one from PubMed Central, and the Access at PacU link at Pacific. In this case, all three options will give you um, the full text. We'll click the Access at PacU link and you'll get to this page where you'll see the link to access it at the library. Then click the link and you'll get to the full text. In this example, the top option will also bring you to the abstract of the article on the publisher's website where you'd have to pay for access. So instead, click the Access at PacU link and you'll see a link to the full text. For this article, the top option would also bring you to the publisher's website where you'd have to purchase the article. So instead, click Access at PacU and you'll see an option to request the article through interlibrary loan. Um, log in to ILLiad, our interlibrary loan service, and um, verify that the article's information is correct, and then click Submit Request at the bottom of the page. Um, the interlibrary loan team is very fast, and you'll receive the article via email, often within a few hours or days. Sometimes it takes longer, but the team's very fast and works to get articles to you as quickly as possible. This is free um, to you, and it's a service, and we want you to request these articles so that you have the resources that you need for your studies. When selecting articles, you'll want to look at the date the article was published and then determine whether it's recent en enough for your topic. But how do you determine whether a, a source such as a research study or a review article or a book is recent enough? To determine this, you'll need to look at what has been published on your topic to get a sense of how recent it should be. You want to find the most recent studies and also look at those that are the highest grades of evidence, such as meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and randomized controlled trials. Here are some things to consider. 
Books, textbooks, and reference sources and other background sources generally take longer to be published than articles. So if you're reading a textbook and you look at the sources they're citing, you might notice that the dates that the sources they're citing are a couple of years old. So that can give you an idea that if you're reading your textbook, how current the information is. This also goes for review articles that are not research studies, but like background resources, um, they summarize information on a topic. So in our example here, we're looking at current medical diagnosis and treatment 2023 from Access Medicine and read that increased dietary intake of omega-3 fatty acids um, has not been shown to have meaningful effect on dry eye syndrome. Then we look at the sources at sites and see that they span from 2016 to 2020. And so we might want to see that um, what research has been published in the last couple of years. In another example, we're looking at a systematic review and a meta-analysis published in 2023. If we look at the literature review section where it explains the current literature on the topic, we see that they noted that the published studies on omega-3 have shown different clinical outcomes and noted that the dry eye evaluation and management, or, or the DREAM study, continued um, considered the potential influence of elements such as patient selection, treatment limitations, and treatment duration um, on the variability um, and difference in, is in outcomes. So based upon this, they included that in their systematic review, um, additional articles published after 2018 to re reflect recent developments in fish oil products and offered a more comprehensive measure for dry eye syndrome. So you can see they didn't choose their dates on what articles to look at arbitrarily, but rather looked at the body of research as a whole and determined that because the DREAM study was influential, they could expect st um, studies published after it was published to include the variables suggested in the DREAM study. Uh, when determining how recent research studies you select need to be, um, first start by seeing what the highest levels of evidence are for that topic. Are there many meta-analyses and systematic reviews published on your topic? For example, for our dry eye and omega-3 topic, there are some meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and randomized controlled trials that are published in the last few years. So we know that these are the highest levels of evidence, and so we'd want to select from those studies. Um, the highest levels published in, um, most recently. So we probably wouldn't looking, be looking at studies published more than a few years old. Um, in contrast, the 2020 rule topic has non-randomized controlled trials, cross-sectional studies, and reviews, which are at the lowest levels of evidence. And there also isn't a lot published. So you'll end up looking at most of the literature published on this topic simply because there isn't very much. You'll look at the non-randomized trials that were published within the last couple of years, but then you'll also look at a review that was published within the last decade. So basically, there isn't a date range. You just need to look at the most recent and best highest grades and good study design evidence available. So if there isn't good evidence, then you need to take that into account when you're deciding a course of action for your patient. When considering research, it's also very important to think about characteristics of your patient's population. Unfortunately, medical research has often not included patients from, under, from underrepresented populations, and so the findings of existing research may not be applicable to these populations for a variety of reasons. This example article states that there have been low inclusion rates of Black patients in studies of glaucoma treatment, although Black patients are more, more, more affected by glaucoma and suffer um, from more advanced disease. So you'd want to consider your patient population and see if that population is represented in your research. If you find that it's understudied, um, you may want to communicate this need to your professional associations as an area that you believe for further research is needed. You also need to be aware that if it's an area, area that's understudied, well, you'll need to seek out what evidence exists for that population and listen, listen to your patient carefully in order to provide them for this, the best care. This article's recommendations are not only to increase representation representation of Black patients in glaucoma research, but to improve trust between patients and providers and access care for this um, and access to care for this population. This leads us to using an equity lens to remove barriers to patient care and requires you to learn specifically about your patient population. The American Optometric Association's Optometric Oath includes the statement, I will work to expand access to quality care and improve health equity for all communities. In order to do this, you'll need to use an equity lens to identify and remove barriers to care for all of your patients, no matter their background. This will improve um, include 
uh, learning about your patients' lives through listening to them and reading best practices for their care. Once you identify a barrier to care, work to change procedures to enable them to access care. Um, this example article discusses the effectiveness of using par participatory decision making with African American patients with glaucoma, and it's an example of how you could read best practices for providing care for your patient population and make changes to your processes. The bottom line is that you know, if you notice things aren't working for your patients, instead of pr placing the blame on them, um, listen to them, read and learn, identify barriers, and then change your practices. Uh, the AOA's clinical practice guidelines list the grades of evidence according to the type of study. So meta-analyses, systematic reviews, randomized controlled trials, and diagnostic studies with good designs are listed as, listed as grade A. And our goal is to find the highest levels of evidence available for our topic. For, so for some topics that have not been thoroughly researched, we might not find many studies, or the studies that we do find might not be high grades of evidence. One thing to note is that while we're doing the first steps of appraising these sources, you'll need to look at their methodology to appraise the quality of their study designs. So even if you have a meta-analysis, if the study design is poor or if it's analyzing other studies that have poor study designs, the evidence will be of low quality. So what we're not covering this in this video, but always just keep in mind that the evidence is only as good as the quality of the study. Remember that just because it's a high grade, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's trustworthy. So um, in the next video, we'll provide examples of appraising sources to answer our research question.